Mister. But uh, in your case, the federal penitentiary is not going to be our first stop. What is this place? We refer to it as a safe house. Somewhere where we can conduct our very private business without public scrutiny. Please sit down, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in a little while. Mr. Foley, wait a minute. Well, if I am going to be arrested, I am going to call my lawyer. Relax, young lady. Just sit down and relax. Mr. Foley! Something wrong? Yes, there is something very wrong. I am here trying to exercise my rights as an American citizen, and this person will not let me call my lawyer. You can go, Swan. Please try to understand, Miss Alexander. This is no ordinary charge and arrest. You're being detained by the government on the most serious of charges. And it's absolutely crazy. I would never commit treason. I, I wouldn't even know how to commit treason. Does this have something to do with my late husband? Yes, it has something to do with Jefferson Brown and something to do with this. I never saw that diary before today. I found it in a safety deposit box. I can prove that. All that really matters to us, Miss Alexander, is what's in the diary. Believe me, you can help your situation if you are honest and direct with us. I am being honest, and I would be direct if I knew what to be direct about. We have every reason to believe that Jefferson Brown, before he committed fraud by gaining control, temporary control, of the Whitney fortune, was engaged in another far more serious crime. Are you telling me he was a spy? Well, I don't think he was actually an agent for a foreign power. But yes, I think he did what he did out of pure and simple greed. Wait a minute, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about that whole incident with Fowler Wilcox. It's part of the story. The part that we already know about, we're hoping you're going to tell us the rest. I don't know anything more. Well, we're in no hurry, particularly. We're prepared to wait as long as necessary. But if you give us satisfactory answers to our questions, why then we are prepared to drop the charges and let you go home. Geraldine is going to be frantic. It's a simple choice, Miss Alexander. We can make the arrest public and the charges, or... No. No, don't. Even though it would be a lie, there are people who would believe it. The choice is yours. You could call your friends and say you've decided to take a few days holiday. I think under the circumstances that would be a justifiable deception, don't you? I suppose so. <sighs> Please don't be concerned, Nicole. I'll get Ed Randolph to do the weekend report. I know that it's important you're up there to look after Jody. How did you manage to get yourselves invited, anyway? <laughs> well, all right, you can tell me all about it when you get back. All right, dear. Bye-bye. Yes. Oh, well. Uh, yes, uh, all right. Hello, Raven. Now, don't tell me. Let me guess. You're in a little dress shop, and you found this adorable little dress, and your credit cards have been refused. No, I am not in a dress shop. I am in a travel agent, and I am going on a trip. You know, I was just walking down the street and I saw this travel agency and I get this sudden impulse to travel. I mean, I was almost literally carried away. Uh, why is it you haven't said a word about this until now? Well, because I hadn't decided anything until now. But don't worry, uh, I won't be gone very long, just a, a couple of days. Where can you go in that short a time? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm at the travel agency. <laughs> Raven, what brought on this sudden attack of wanderlust? Oh, I don't know. I guess I just needed a rest, you know? When are you leaving? Well, I already left. I mean, I'm leaving now. I'm going now. You mean right this minute? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I called you, just to say goodbye. Oh, just a minute, Raven. I don't even know where I can reach you. I... That, I'll get in touch with you uh, as soon as I get some time, okay? Goodbye. That was very well handled, Miss Alexander. Now I'm going to go look after your living accommodations. When I return, you and I will read Jefferson Brown's diary together. Come in. Hello, my dear. Hi, Mrs. Saxon. Uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Well, of course. Come and sit down. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about taking a couple of days off. I know. I know all about it. You do? Yes, I just got off the phone with Nicole. And she had exactly the same request to make. So, you've all been invited to that medieval pageant upstate. Yes, we have. It's an uh, anniversary celebration for the Republic of Eden. Well, it sounds interesting. Knights in shining armor and all that. Mm. Actually, I thought it might provide some material for the show. I, I think the kids would love to hear about it, so maybe I'll be able to bring back some footage. But Nicole tells me that they will not allow any local coverage. Uh, no, but uh, I thought they might be able to give me some afterwards. Of course. So then it's okay with you. I mean, it, uh, it could mean repeating a show. Well, it wouldn't be the first time, would it? No, there's no problem here. I trust there won't be one there. No. No, why, sh why should there be? It's, uh, just a party, sort of. You know, Jody, for someone who's looking forward to a party, or should be, you don't seem to be particularly happy about it. Well, it's just that the invitations are limited, and that means Gavin won't be able to go with me. Then you'll be going with Miles and Nicole. No. I have an escort, Chad Sutherland. Oh, a very distinguished escort, then. He's the son of Eden's president, isn't he? Mm. And he'll be there, and he'll probably make an opening speech at the main ceremony and, and stuff mm. like that. My dear, it sounds fascinating. I... I just hope you'll be careful. Uh, yeah, of course I will. Jody, your last encounter with Eden turned out unpleasantly. I hope this time will be an improvement. Come on, kid, pick your chin up off the carpet, will you? I'm not telling you to waste a girl. All I want you to do is make life a little inconvenient for her, that's all. Do you get the picture? Maybe you got the wrong idea about me, Mr. Lorma. I wasn't in the slammer for mugging nobody. I never said you was. You probably went away for something very classy, right? What'd you do, hold up a Federal Reserve Bank, right? It was not that classy. It was a jewelry store heist. All I did was play lookout, and guess who was the only one caught? Well, this time you're not gonna get caught. I guarantee it. Oh, yeah? How come? How come? I'll tell you how come, because I'm Mr. Fix-It, that's right. Everything I do, I fix, and I fix it good, okay? Besides, you're gonna have police protection. What? Don't worry about it. Look, you just take care of the Travis girl, okay? You take care of it, and I'm guaranteed, not only won't you go to the Slammer, you'll spend two weeks in Hawaii. You'll be walking down Watkin Key Beach over there and uh, eating pina coladas all day long. You know, I hear it's a drink, yeah? Yeah, look, this is very important to me now. There's no fooling around here, you understand? We can't spend any time fooling around with this thing. You must get this job done. Yeah, but, but putting some hurt on a little girl, Mr. Al Lorman, that's not my style. She's not a little girl. This is a hundred-pound barracuda, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, how come? I'll tell you how come. We can't let this girl get to that little picnic in the country. Now, look, I don't want you to hurt her. You don't have to hurt her. All you got to do is make sure she cannot travel. Understand? Look, I don't know, Eddie. I ain't never done nothing like this before. Uh, what do you think this is? Some kind of cushiony job here? Now, I thought you were a stand-up guy. Stand-up guys take orders and do what they're told. Look, maybe there's some other way to keep her in town. Maybe I look, I can think of something. I already thought of something. And you're it. Damien, 
It's terrific how you can say so much without saying one word. And just for that, I've got a surprise for you. I spoke to the doctor today, and he said it would be okay for you to have some solid food for a change. I don't mean you can rip into a steak, but I did buy some nice sirloin, and I had it chopped up real fine. And I'm also making some nice pureed spinach and carrots, but wait! We'll have chocolate pudding for dessert. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Oh, good. I'll go get it stuck. All right. Damien! What? You talked. Oh, that's right. I spoke to my doctor today, and he said it was okay to start working on my voice. Are you sure? You don't want to hurt your poor throat. Well, I said I had to work on my vocal cords, otherwise I might lose my voice completely. Oh, Damien, I, that's terrific. But I still think that you should take it easy. Don't try and say too much, okay? Right. They say that uh, action speaks louder than words, well, don't they? That's what they say. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm. Hmm. I hope that's not the vice squad. <clears throat> Close. Hello, Chief Mallory. Miss Johnson, hello. How's our patient? Fantastic. His health, Miss Johnson? I'm talking about his health. Yes. Hi, right, Chief. How are you doing? Well, it sounds like you're on the road to recovery. Hey, I'm practically there. Well, uh, that's what he says, but it's really the first time he's been able to talk since the shooting. Well, actually, that's not true. I did work with the uh, doctor a little bit today when I saw him. You sound fine. You sound fine. Just don't uh, overdo it. Well, that's just what I told him. <laughs> Chief, can I get you something? No, no, no. No, thank you. Oh, well, uh, I think I'll get this dinner started then. I'm glad to see you're making such good progress. Maybe you can get back to work soon. Hey, I'm waiting right now, ready to go. Well, let's wait for the medical okay first. But Calvin, I'll be real glad to see you. He, well, I had to team him up with Ted Loomis. I know, Calvin told me about that. You know, he doesn't care too much for Loomis, Chief. As a matter of fact, neither do I. Yeah, I know, but I didn't have much choice. The manpower situation is pretty bad. If I have to take another cutback, I should be walking oh, the streets. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, well, I didn't want to interrupt anything, you know, I just want to come by and see how you were, maybe bring you up to date a little bit. I'm okay, actually, I'd like to know a little bit more about the Ellis Campbell case. Well, the Campbell case, well, there's not much new on that. We, uh, still haven't ruled out Chad Sutherland as a possible suspect, although there's no question about that wound on his head. But you don't think the wound was self-inflicted? That's doubtful. That's really doubtful. And frankly, I just can't see a, a kid like Chad Sutherland committing a brutal crime like that. Maybe, but it still could be a politically motivated crime. Well, there are other things besides just political motivations. Like what? We just released him with the uh, immunity against prosecution. Sure, but we wanted to see if he could give us any information about a possible link between Eden and our local crime mob. Hi. See the clock on the wall? I got ten minutes. I got a patient coming. Oh, forget it. I shouldn't be That's bothering right. you. No, no, no. I have a little bit of time. It's Mrs. Mulvaney. She's always late. Sit down. Tell me what's bothering. How do you always know when something's bothering me? Oh, it's a pretty sure sign when you come to my office. Well, I think that's because a doctor's office is a good place to get advice. <laughs> and boy, do I need some. Not medical, I take it. Miles, I had the worst fight with Gavin today at lunch. Do I have to guess the topic? No, I think you already know it. He's very upset that I'm going to this tricentennial with Chad. Is he jealous? No. He thinks that I am heading for serious trouble and that I'm going to do something crazy and get myself hurt. And don't you think that thought has occurred to some other people around here? Yes, I know that you and Nicole feel the same way. I mean, that's why you're going, isn't it? Jody, let me ask you something. What exactly do you plan to do when you get there? I don't know. Uh, have a good time, if that's possible. Although I don't think it will be without Gavin there. There's another reason. You'll be far too nervous thinking about that little announcement you're planning to make, won't you? You are planning to make an announcement, aren't you? Uh, yeah, if the right moment occurs. And how are you going to know when the right moment occurs? Jody, I know you got some kind of a plan in your mind. You can't just jump into range of a TV camera and start ranting about your ancestry. I don't know. What are you going to do? You're going to improvise when you get there? Is that uh, what you're telling me? Would you please stop asking me these questions I cannot answer? Why can't you answer them? Because you don't know, you don't want me to know. Look, I don't know anything. I don't know how he planned. 
plans to do it. He? Who is he? Um, I don't know. I, I just meant that there will probably be somebody there who, who will tell me what to do. And who is that? A member of the revolutionary group? Yes. How can you be sure? I'm not sure. I'm not sure of anything. Jody, do you know how carefully they're screening those invitations? Oh, please, I You just have don't... already got your contact there, don't you? Did I say that? No, but it's as plain as the nose on your face. You're not alone in this. You've got someone helping you, and I want to know who it is. Miles, I can't tell you. I just can't. Ladies, please excuse me for being so late. I had to visit one of my fallen warriors. Oh, was that Damien Tyler? Yes, as a matter of fact. He just spoke his first words today, the first time in two weeks. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Well, did he say anything about being contacted by a government agent? A government agent? No. Why do you ask that? Because a man named George Foley came to see me. He had very authentic-looking credentials from the CEA, the Counter Espionage Agency. And he asked me a lot of questions about Jeff Brown in the time that I had known him in Switzerland. Using another name. When I knew Jeff Brown at my father's clinic, he was using the name Jim Dedrickson. Uh, and as a matter of fact, when Foley was at my apartment, the real Jim Dedrickson was there. Hmm. Sit down, please. Uh, gee, this is the first time I've heard anything about a governmental investigation into this matter. Well, then he went to see Nancy because of the series she'd done in the Monticello News. And yes, he wanted to use my notes on the story, and I didn't know of any reason why not to cooperate, especially since uh, he implied that there uh, might be a good deal more to Jefferson Brown than any of us knows. More than just the fact that he worked for Fowler Wilcox, Damien's father. Yes. Derek, we now believe that Mr. Foley is a fraud. You what? Nancy got suspicious because we found out that Foley had not once contacted Sky Whitney. Now, Sky knew Jeff better than anyone, except Raven, I guess. And I did some checking through the paper, and there isn't any such agent. Nancy, have you ever thought of joining the force here? All right, let's go to May 21st. N.B. Do you know anyone whose initials are N.B.? I've already told you. I didn't even know Jeff Brown on May 21st, mm -hmm. 1980. You knew him afterwards, didn't you? You knew him well enough to marry him. Surely he talked to you about his friends and business acquaintances. Maybe you even met some of them. Sky never talked business. His name was Brown, and I want to know who N.B. was. I told you, I don't know. All right, let's go to May 23rd. P.Q.B. 4, what does that mean? I don't know. All right, May 24th, more initials, R.R. Who was that? This is ridiculous! How many times do I have to tell you I know nothing, nothing about what's in that stupid diary? Swanson. <sighs> ah, Lucinda. Here's your dinner at last, Miss Alexander. Oh, thank heavens I'm famished. Well, you thought this was no ordinary arrest before. Wait until you have a sample of Lucinda's cooking. Good. Ah, 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 ah. Answers first, Miss Alexander, and then dinner. May 25th. Morning. Tommy, turn on the dishwasher. Annie, Mom wants you to... I thought you would understand him because I thought you would be on my side. You don't think that now? No. Look, I know that you and Nicole care about me and that you're afraid I'm going to make a fool of myself, which is probably what I'll do. Well, I wish you could trust us a little bit, Jody. You know, it's very difficult to help somebody when, when, they, when they keep things from you. Miles, sometimes you, you just can't tell everything. Not when you're sworn to secrecy. Ah, uh, you see, the trick is not to swear. Secrets are a burden. Oh, you are so right about that. <laughs> Listen, we're all going to be together at that pageant. It's going to be hard to keep your secret then. Look, I hope you're not planning to follow me around every minute. Jody, we just want to look after you. We love you. We're worried about you. And we're still hoping you're going to change your mind don't, about this. Please. Don't, don't try to change my mind. It's not going to do you any good. It's, uh, it's more than ten minutes. Well, I told you, Mrs. Mulvaney's always late. It's all right. Well, uh, I think I'm going to get going. 
Thank you. Bye. Barbara, give me my home, would you? Honey? Yeah. I just had a visitor. You guessed it. No, I didn't manage to do that, but I... I did find out the answer to our question, I think. I'll tell you what, why don't you meet me at Robin's Lounge a little bit later. I'll tell you all about it. Yeah. Goodbye. Great food. All entered.